hi welcome to TWR Facebook live I this is a little bit like a, a spontaneous um, Facebook live um, I just decided to do this uh, yesterday so uh, so today's topic uh, I wanted to discuss a little bit about uh, fear and freedom so the fear versus freedom uh, this is something that I think uh, we are all um, facing very much uh, around the world, this moment around the world. Sorry, just have to... Okay, I think it's fine. <laughs> so... So fear versus freedom. So I said in the subtitle here a little bit about true sense of freedom can only begin when the fear ends. You know, when the fear ends, then the true sense of freedom begins. So of course, if in that sense, some 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 sense that uh, fear to end the fear in our life it seems like impossible as a human being. We probably. We always had a fear. We probably will always have a fear in the future uh, until one achieve the enlightenment. So, so according to the Dharma, according to Buddhism, the fear will end when uh, one achieve uh, enlightenment, liberation. Until then, the fear will be there. So some sense, so true sense of freedom uh, can only begin where fear ends. So. So, of course, we all talk about freedom uh, and uh, many people, some degree, believe they are free and have some sense of freedom, but according to the teaching, in some sense, uh, a free, true sense of freedom only we can reach when we have some, achieve enlightenment. So, uh, so if you think about the fear, um, we all know very, very well uh, in the world. We also know very well how we face that in everyday life. Um, regardless of sometimes we admit that or not, it's, it's in every single human being. I don't know anybody who does not have a fear. If somebody says they don't have a fear, I'm not sure I believe that. So um, if you look in the world, Hold the election, election, political is running based on fear or winning based on fear. Um, if you look at the finance and the global market, very much fluctuate on the basis on a fear. If you think about the war, there are so many wars uh, in um, are, are planning to have a war or having currently in in conflict in the war. Uh, very much, they are all are also based on fear. And sometimes, also, even some religion is also sometimes basis on fear, and so it's fear. It seems like it's so much a fundamental uh, basis of our human nature. Uh, so it's very much deeply rooted. So I wanted to talk a little bit about in in terms of the uh, Dharma in the teaching. Uh, particularly in terms of the Dzogchen teaching, the teaching of great perfection, ancient tradition, from ancient tradition. According to this tradition, um, we, there, is a, this, there is a sense of what we call the wisdom of changeless. Um, wisdom of changeless. I think the wisdom of changeless is very much, I believe and I feel, that it is the antidote of fear. So I repeat this again, wisdom of changeless. That means uh, the wisdom, the awareness, which understands, which realizes, which experiences the changelessness uh, of the truth, of the nature, of the nature of mind, or the changelessness of who truly we are, uh, our changeless essence, whenever we discover that changeless essence, then we 
are free from the fear of changes and when we are free from fear of changes no matter what changes are happening around us or might happen to us we will feel free from those changes such as change a change of uh, losing something or change of encountering enemy uh, aging death sickness uh, um, um, so some major changes in our life so whatever changes that we might face we might be free from uh, from those changes that means those changes will not affect us otherwise um, I think f um, fear is very much about I think the re very fundamental root about the fear it seems very much about change and the only antidote is to discover the changeless nature of ourself the changeless aspect of ourself or changeless aspect of the truth uh, truth does not change and when you don't when you realize the truth which does not change then it sets you free until then no matter whatever truth you're talking you will never truly feel freedom or you will never truly experience um, fearlessness so so some some sense it's very much a base on idea of changes for example in a, if you look at in a people in life there are a lot of people even idea of death in facing death people will say i'm ready to i'm i'm okay with the idea of death i uh, i'm i'm ready for uh, for death uh, and and whenever they encounter those moments closer in their life then they uh, step back then they say no i'm not ready yet i don't mind living a little longer why now and, uh, and so on so basically when that really that moment comes uh, everybody seems like a backup maybe only a few uh, true realized people who who might have some experiences of feeling completely okay but most of us we definitely have um, you know uh, challenges with that uh, even I, I I knew no people who who seems like quite uh, highly realized but then when they face that moment they, they, they feel they face the challenges also the same way so so some sense this this sense of change less wisdom uh, so we will I will speak a little bit about that later and I will uh, uh, wanted to guide short meditation into that changeless wisdom so so as long as fear is in us if you think about as long as fear is there in us then true freedom is difficult so what is the freedom What is what 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 you, uh, what each of you will think about? What what it means to freedom to you? So according to the teaching, as long as fear is there, there is no freedom. Fear, free, true freedom is only when you achieve. Uh, when you're free uh, from the fear and to be free from the fear will be to realize our changeless essence as I said before so I think in some sense it's always go back so normally in our life everybody thinks about um, like countries like uh, democratic countries we talk about freedom uh, free of freedom of speech freedom of their religion freedom of this and freedom of that but still um, they a true sense of what the benefit of the freedom will be there sometimes it always seems like a difficult and very often free a sense of this freedom is also very much misused and uh, so in a, in a way like if the freedom is supposed to give you some sense of really uh, uh, a joy uh, 
ability to connect with each other, each other, ability to feel a sense of love and warmth, but sometimes freedom does not seem like a genuine freedom or genuine openness should bring compassion and love, but a false sense of a freedom and openness does not seem like bringing joy and love. It's sometimes even going into the wrong direction of, of a lot of hate. So in, in some sense of today's world, it's like um, so much war uh, fight between openness and closeness. People are uh, always fighting. It looks like throughout the century that there's always this fight between uh, open, how much you need to open, close, how much you need to close. So you open so, so much, then you have to close so much, or you have to close so much, then some point you have to open. So it, in the Buddhism, they would say it's like a middle way. So in a way, middle way is very much the sense of openness and closeness. Uh, like, uh, so uh, openness is definitely good, but sometimes when people are not able to uh, understand fully, appreciate fully, recognize fully the openness, then then openness becomes a fearful place and then people start to shut down and close down. And that is where many of these things are happening in the world today. So, so fear is also um, a source of hate and anger. So if you, if you look at nowadays, uh, there is unfortunately in the world, there is a, so much hate going on, uh, so much anger going on. And for sure, uh, clearly, I think uh, we don't need, absolutely, we don't need more hate. We don't need uh, more anger in this world, but, uh, but it does exist. And sometimes we have to be very careful and be aware uh, hating the hate is not any different from the first hate. Uh, getting angry to the person who is angry at you, it does not get better either. So some sense of uh, uh, not remaining silence, but not uh, responding with hate or anger, but with a, a wisdom uh, of silence, a wis how you say, uh, uh, action uh, from that stillness, um, uh, the clear voices from that silence, but not anger and hate. So I think it's some sense of not even when we feel it, we feel it, but I think it's, uh, one has to be aware to not to activate and not to act from that place, not to um, speak from that place, but trying to find a deeper stillness and deeper silence. And from that deeper silence and deeper stillness, I think there is more clarity and more confidence uh, in, in the action of peace and in a, a spirit uh, how you say the uh, speeches of peace, uh, more will come from those places. So I think it's important not to lose uh, because there is a hate and anger there, not to lose our ground. So, so some some sense in the teaching, I think it's very important to always uh, able to recognize and acknowledge whenever one feels hopeless, frustration, anger and some degree even hate. So I think it's a, moment, it's a very important to recognize that. So basically hate is not a solution for hate. Fear cannot overcome fear. So, so what is the solution then? So I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, according to the teaching. Um, according to the teaching, first of all, I think it's very important we recognize so I'll make a few points. Recog recognition of fear, okay? A recognition of fear. So if you, all of you, if this moment, just for a moment, trying to remain quiet, remain still, remain silence, feel a sense of connected to now, here, to yourself, and to reflect deep in yourself, what is your fear this moment?
do you uh, clearly acknowledge, uh, face, willing to face, willing to acknowledge and recognize your fear this moment? Uh, obviously, you can think about what you are afraid of, like you are afraid of your health, your finance, your relationship, your family, your children, your work, and particularly, how do you feel that fear? It's, you know, there's a rational things that you are afraid of something clearly understood. But it's probably more important to go closer than your conceptual idea about fear. How do you, how do you actually feel it? How do you feel in your body? How do you contract your breath? How do you close your heart, your mind? So it's a very much I want I'm asking all of you to really like trying to see uh, the only way truly the only way to overcome fear is to recognize and process and clear and and free from it as much as possible by recognizing and by going close and by processing it rather than denying it, uh, rejecting it, analyzing it, distancing from it, rationalizing it and taking very emotional, fearful uh, reactions, responses. We all know like uh, how many wars, unfortunately, how many wars get started like that way. You know, we know that the Iraq war, supposed to be, there was an imminent threat. And they're also saying there was not any imminent threat. But even there was imminent threat, then what does that mean? Basically means you, we are fearful, we, we, we feel danger, then we go to the war. So even no imminent threat, but imminent, experiencing of imminent threat is very much comes from the fear. Between two people, when they fight, they do the same thing. So, so let's kind of look closely. I wanted to not lose our experience part of it. So each one of you, please look closely yourself. What is your fear? How you, what are your fear of? How you're rationalizing it? And how you're experiencing it in your body now and here? And also trying to recognize sometime uh, you are responding fear with anger. You are res responding uh, situation with the hate, some degree of hate. You are afraid of fear. You think maybe sometimes you even think fear is a solution of fear, hate is a solution of hate, but truly I don't think that is the case. So, as you're experiencing it, so you're feeling your own fear, whatever that is, ask this question, how actually you are going to overcome this fear that you're experiencing or you're recognizing this moment? First of all, I hope you're recognizing, and the most important, without recognizing, acknowledging it, going closer to it, processing it, 
without doing that, there is no way to overcome fear. If, if you are really truly facing fear or you have been facing fear, you have issues of deep fear, that, de that definitely means you're, you're unable to rec acknowledge and recognize and process it. I'm going to talk about a little bit more how, what, that, what does that mean, how to do it. But first, I think understand that is why it did, it did manage to stay there that long or is still staying there or it might stay there for a long time. So as, as I'm speaking, I wanted to hear, so what is it? What is your answer? How do you feel it? Are you, are you admitting your fear? Are you acknowledging your fear? Do you recognize your fear? Do you recognize, exp experience how you're feeling it? So I would, I would love to hear your responses here. If you are, if you're angry at somebody, you if you are fear of somebody or something, but the object is only causing to ex experience it. But actual experiences is not in the object. Actual experiences is in you. So, so if you look inside, you feel it. It's a, it's a presence is there. So now let's turn your direction inward. If it's in the stomach. Bring your attention there. If you feel in your chest, bring your attention there. If you feel in your throat and breath, bring in there. Your fear is aspect of yourself. Your fear is your pain. And you have now opportunity to, to acknowledge it, opportunity to recognize it, opportunity to be gentle with your fear, opportunity to be kind with your fear, opportunity to be open to your fear, opportunity to accommodate your fear, opportunity to be present with your fear, Opportunity to give this what I call spacious, luminous, warm hug to your fear. Opportunity to look at your fear and give a smile. Opportunity to look at your fear, make, make a, be a humorous. Opportunity to be with your fear and laugh. Opportunity to look at your fear and dance. And probably in the sequence that I was repeating all these things, all this opportunity that I'm saying, very likely in those sequence, maybe some, some things ups and down, but more likely in those sequence. From recognition to able to dance. If you, if you, the practice of Chu, very famous practice of Chu, which kind of very well known in Tibet, which around 10, 11th century started. So if the whole notion of that practice of Chu is, you know, dancing on the top of your ego, the fear. But rather than your fear is conquering you, dancing on top of you, it takes your smile away, it takes your humors away, 
it takes your creativity away, your openness away, but you do the other way around. You are only able to do the other way around once again if you recognize, acknowledge and process it. So now my question to you, in more like a, in a concrete sense, what do you realize now? Let's just give a little example of, you know, like, um, as we all know, like a, a tragic uh, event in Charlottesville, Virginia, a peaceful a city, beautiful city, wonderful people living there from all over, uh, from different nations. So the rally of hate, anger there. And uh, so if you look at situation like that, news like that, news like in Barcelona, you hear all these different news around the world. How do you respond? How do you feel? Do you feel anger? Do you feel hate? Do you feel hopelessness? Are you shocked? Yes, obviously. Sad, yes. Definitely, I do feel sad, surprised, shocked. But we all know responding with hate is not much different. Responding with anger is not much different. But that definitely gives us a chance to reflect our own frustration, hate, anger, unable to process, it, it teaches us something. And if we are able to acknowledge our own anger, if we feel hate, then recognize your own hate. If you feel anger, recognize your own your anger. If you feel hopeless, recognize that. If you feel fear, recognize that. And I'm, I'm not saying recognize that does not mean don't take action. Clearly not. In situations like that, actions need to be taken. But actions need to come from right place with certain certain degree of confidence, clarity. Groundedness. Certainty. Power, and that that kind of response is necessary, but not hate, anger. So just, I think it's good to look at oneself for a moment here. Okay, so I think I think um, that's fine. Um, I, I, we will do a short meditation, a short guided meditation. So I hope that all of you sit comfortably. Just take a few deep breathing. The reason why we want to take a few deep breathing is whatever experiences you are having, particularly any form of discomfort experiences, 
just breathe it out, clear it out, let it go. And each exhalation Go deeper, find your ground, the base, deep a sense of being, stillness, And we are all together here and we are all open to support each other, to help each other and feel that you are open to help me, I am open to help you sense that and also feel help from support from others and say yourself I'm willing to give help to others Feel this collective stillness of Cyber Sangha. Feel the collective sense of silence, peace. Feel the collective sense of openness. We are all connected through openness. Just be aware of this unbounded sacred space, the base of all, or this unbounded openness. The awareness of that unbounded openness presence like a being unbounded sacred sky or sacred space
space is indestructible. The sky is like indestructible, changeless. Nothing can change. All the element arises in that sky, takes places in that sky, dissolves into that sky. No one element can affect the sky. Sky is changeless. Same way who you are, Just trying to realize that change less essence, what we call the eternal body, Juran Mepiku, who you are, is changeless. Your body, your thought, your emotion, your experiences is arising, it's staying, it's dissolving, but it's not changing who you are. Change less essence. When, when you are aware of this change-less essence, that awareness, we say Jurva Mepi Yishe, the wisdom or the awareness of that changeless, changelessness. The stronger you realize that, feel that, the less the fear you are going to have. So the less fear you will have, the stronger you will realize that change less wisdom. You are, your essence, you are changeless. Recognition of that is, or awareness of that is the changeless wisdom, which knows it. Knowing that is the beginning of feeling freedom, feeling free from fear. Now, as you feel a little bit more close to that, that's your strength. That is that awareness your, is your certainty. That awareness is your armor, protection. Now, just for a moment, begin to reflect your fear. What is, what is your fear? This moment in your life, what fear you are facing? Is it a health, a job, relationship, finance, the world, the politic? Be honest, be brave, self-reflect, recognize, recognize. Recognize what you're afraid of first. 
and you clearly know your fear, whatever you, whatever you are fear of, is not so much to do with that thing or with someone, but the fear is fully within you. And sometime in our life, we spend so much time expecting, chasing, fixing, going crazy with circumstances, situation, and people trying to overcome one's own fear, which, which we always usually we fail. So in this case, you do not do that. You don't do that in this practice. Look at it only to recognize it, but then look inward, the fear as a raw material, like energy, that how you feel, where you feel in your body. Look at your breath, look at your heart, breathing in your heart. Look at your contractions of your mind. Look at your, your pain in your parts of your body, your stomach, your muscles. As you see them, feel them, you go closer to them. This is what I mean, recognition of fear. Go closer to them. Like mother will go closer to the child when she sees the child, it, child is afraid or child is in pain. Or you would go closer to somebody, your best friend, who is in pain or who is ter terrified with their fear or panic attacks. Obviously, you will go closer to that person, to your friend. So going closer Acknowledging going closer is the solution, not going away and disconnecting, it's not the solution. So go closer, accommodate, host, just for a moment, just for a moment, be with your fear. Be in that stillness, be in that silence, be in that spaciousness, and be presence with this fear. Be presence with fear. And you know, we all are supporting each other to you to be a presence with your fear. You have over 200 people supporting here. Just feel this. This is very important. That this is what for me is very important. Our cyber sangha, uh, collectively, we here coming together, supporting each other. Feel that support. Be presence with you your fear. Breathe deep. Think about this as a very collective, powerful healing. Be gentle with your fear. Like the mother, like the friend, like a healer. Be kind to your fear.
And if it makes sense, this, this idea of give a spacious, luminous, warm hug to your fear. What does this mean? Be, means spacious means being open to your fear. Luminous means being aware of your fear. Because awareness is light. It illuminates the darkness of fear. Warmth means the kindness or compassion, love these qualities. So your qualities of compassion, love, kindness, it's accommodating your own fear. If you are following me now and practicing what I'm recommending, you are, you are, you are your healer. You are your healer. We are helping you to heal yourself, to heal that pain. And you will gradually witness that the fear for a moment you are able to remain present and accommodate and give spacious luminous warm hug is clearly dissolving or, or gradually it's liberating In a, in a tradition of great perfection, Dzogchen, there is a word called Cherta Cherdo, which means nakedly seeing and nakedly liberating. Basically, you are able, maybe some for some of you, some of you, it's the first time you are able to see this close, this pure, this direct and that is what your power is ability to go closer go clearly see directly not bring another fear or another hate another anger frustration nothing just being presence Okay, so I hope um, I hope this was a little bit helpful. Um, just to conclude a little bit, I think we're almost like an hour here, so we just want to conclude uh, down. Is according to the Dzogchen teaching, the teaching of great perfection, uh, unless one realizes the awareness or the wisdom of changelessness, jura may be ishi, or realization of jura may be ko, changeless eternal body, there is no way to overcome fear. And if you do not overcome fear, there is no notion of freedom. And everything that freedom that we talk about, it's a really absolutely relative. And when we say truth sets free, and that notion of truth is also very relative. And if most of the time we are, we are thinking of truth, truth sets free in terms of 
very much objective sense of truth. An objective truth has so many different versions of the truth. You see two political, two mainstream of politics, right and left, you see totally two different truths. And obviously each one believes what their own truth is the truth, not the other one. Between religion, politics, between two people, I'm sure we face this all the time. There's a two sides of the stories. And two sides of the freedom, I notion of freedom. So in a true sense of freedom, it's only can achieve through the self-realization, through, through realization of this changelessness. But I think in some sense of, it's, it's um, this really like a question about how, how much you can remain open or not. You know, this is, I always just think about, this is the question that I ask sometimes, you know, in life. Of course, I believe in openness, in, in the view of openness, in the approach of openness, in any situation I feel close or I feel like, a, uh, I feel like people even taking advantage of my openness. And I know people are taking advantage of my openness, but I also know that regardless of that, my, it, there's, it's not an option to close me, to close down. If you're a true seeker of spiritual seeker, a true enlightened seeker, true seeker of true liberation, closing is not an option. One needs you to keep on opening and opening and opening. You might take a break, you might slow down, but you would not reverse. Reverse is not an option. And I think in some time you see in the world, like um, definitely people open and then they close down completely, go so extreme the other side, where the hate and anger and and uh, hopelessness and isolation, borders and the boundaries, everything is created because of that. But as a practitioner, the closing is not an option. So this is, at least, this is how I feel. And uh, I hope that things what we were saying here are making sense. And I hope particularly this short practice what we did I hope that this helps a little bit to able to cope and handle some of the fear that we are, each one of you are facing or individually or collectively. So thank you, thank you very much. And, uh, and I don't remember all the next um, schedule and uh, Facebook uh, alive. Uh, we have uh, definitely have few uh, conversations with uh, Tibetan doctors and also uh, some uh, scientists, researchers, and um, and also uh, we also have uh, inviting uh, teachers from all the uh, schools in Tibetan Buddhism, like uh, the f um, six different major schools, and. Um, Bern and other five uh, uh, schools, the teachers from each school, so I'm inviting them all uh, to have a conversation that every, or each one of them can share their um, history and uh, the pra primary practices or principal practices of each tradition and then their, their own personal reflection and experiences, uh, their wisdom that they, they will be happy to share with us. So uh, I am very much looking forward talking with the Tibetan doctors and different other teachers from other schools and uh, scientists. So, so many things are coming and every now and then I will also be doing some other spontaneous things that I have, uh, uh, things that every time I'm traveling around and reflecting things and I very much uh, would love to share and then I am also very much looking forward to visit my teacher in France tomorrow. So in Shenzhen, uh, I'll be going there for uh, visit him. I go every year a couple of times. So uh, very much looking forward. So thank you very much. All my love, blessings. Thank you.